All right. Thank you all for being here this morning. Welcome to Mount Carmel Bible Church. I'm Pastor Richard, and again, we say that for future viewers. Uh, it's been a while since we were in the uh, Be Prepared series, and you know, rightfully so. We took a break for, well, one time I was unavailable to be here because of military duties, um, and we had uh, Jim here. Another time, uh, the next time Randy came, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be here or not. And I was, but we already had him set up to, to fill in for me. And then, of course, the Easter season was here, so we had to divert our path a little bit for the Easter um, messages. But, as you know, he has planned, not me, this uh, last... Uh, Part of the Being Prepared series falls right in line with Easter. But before we get into that, it's going to be a quick reminder, since we have been uh, away from this series for a while, we started talking about being prepared for our physical needs, uh, when, uh, and it started when we were talking um, with the, uh, the trucking convoy headed to D.C., of course that's been over now, uh, we talked about the supply chain issues that uh, apparently are still a thing according to Sheets and a few other places. And we know because of the COVID, we went through a time where we couldn't get toilet paper, couldn't get eggs, we couldn't get certain foods. So being prepared is when we have some extra resources to invest in, in some things that we know we're gonna need in the future, just in case, well now, just in case inflation doubles again, <clears throat> we can, save a little money if we're a little prepared. Um, we also talk about being prepared for trials. Um, there's trials all throughout our lives that are that are keep coming up and uh, they're going to continue to come up. That's just the way life works. So being prepared for adversity and for difficulties, uh, we can get ahead of that. Being prepared that we know our church is going to be attacked spiritually. We've, we've had discussions about some of the things that we've changed and some of the things that we're, we're working towards, and uh, we need to be prepared for stuff like that. Um, being prepared to answer the question, why do I believe in God? That's a big one. Because if you can really answer that confidently, and, and we remember when we went over it, you, know, you can change over time with experience um, your answer. But if you know in your heart that you believe in God, everything else is much easier. And then, of course, preparing to minister to others. And we talked about that. We talked about our ministry report earlier than we were supposed to, but um, I was going to include that in this part of the, our remembrance. Uh, Jen, no fur. <laughs> How many people we feed? Uh, I think it was 35. 35? I thought it was much higher than that. I thought it was like 75 this, this week. No, 75 no, last week. No, it was week four was 75. Oh. It was cold this week, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. <laughs> so 35 this week, and then um, other ministries were, were helping. The, uh, we're delivering some of the leftovers to um, the hotel, motels that, yeah. that hold the, that are holding people, uh, low income and a few other <clears throat> ministries as well. Uh, Barbara, you mentioned uh, six families plus other ministries that we're helping as well. And that's just, you know, it's two small groups here, you know, from here. Um, we're, we need to get that list of uh, requests up on the, on the, in the back somewhere where we can start collecting things that, that are gonna be continually in need. Uh, so, those things we've covered in, in the previous sermons about being prepared. So we're going to talk about something a little different this time. It's being prepared for the end. Now, it's not exactly what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, and that's ominous. Being prepared uh, for the end is partly uh, when we think about our end, when we think about um, when we pass on, and get rid of these weak and twisted bodies and go right up to heaven, be with the Lord. 
That's the, the part we should be excited about. But when we're talking about being prepared, uh, <laughs> we'll be talking about what we leave behind for our, our loved ones. And it's not just if we pass on. But being prepared uh, for your loved ones is a loving way to show your loved ones how you cared for them. And we can look at an example of that. Um, Jesus prepared uh, himself for his next step when he was uh, put on the cross. He was talking in John 16, uh, 16 through 17, your sorrow will turn into joy. Uh, a, a little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me, uh, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said that one to one another, what is that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So what he was telling them, again, they didn't understand it. He was telling them he was going to be, he was going to die, and he was coming back. So we all think about it that way too. When we die, we're going to be back, right? He made that possible. We just talked about that over Easter. And another uh, great message that he gave us uh, from the cross in John 19, 26 through 27, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, uh, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. What he was doing there was preparing he was the oldest. He was responsible for his mother. He was going away. So he made sure his mother was taken care of. That's a beautiful sentiment. It, it shows not only his love and his compassion, but his human side as well. He knew his responsibilities, and he took care of her. But it doesn't necessarily mean we're talking about the end of our lives. It wasn't the end of Jesus' life. He died on the cross, and three days later, he was back. He could have came back and then took care of his mother, right? He shifted his responsibilities over to someone else while he was still going to be around. And we all need to think about that. We're passing the torch on to someone else. We've had a lot of it experiences here lately where that brings to light. We, and uh, I'm going to put Leroy on the spot here in a minute. Our examples include Leroy's been out of service for a while. He hasn't been around. Thank God he's back. We love him. We need him. But he was out for a few months. And as we think that doesn't really affect the day-to-day -day operations too much, it kind of does. Kevin and Larry are out again. A vacation, and I'm not saying anybody here or in any kind of ministry shouldn't take a vacation. That's not at all what I'm saying. But because Larry, Kevin, and Leroy have been out so much, things have been on hold. Uh, Jennifer has been has put in her application for to be a, a full time official voting member of this church, and according to our bylaws, you know she cannot be voted in with one person has to have a majority, two people. And it's kind of unfair to say, hey, Leroy, you got to vote on whether she can be in or not because he hasn't been here to get to know her yet. He's gotten to know her a little bit already, and I'm sure he's got a, a good a grasp on her now. But him walking in the door last week, could we ask him to do that? Probably wouldn't be that fair of a, of, a, of a question. And I'm sure Jennifer understands that. Mm -hmm. And we only had, Larry was here last week, but not Kevin. So with one person out, or two people out, we can't do that kind of business that we need to do. 
So we need to start thinking about how to do business without key members. And Barbara, when you were uh, running around with Skippy with appointments, how many times did you miss bread pickups? I was blessed and did not oh, miss okay. bread pickups. Okay, but you had to do extra running around and you were stressed. Uh, yeah, and, and I made um, accommodations for what I needed to do for him that did not interfere with the bread pickups. Okay, so you put him to the side. <laughs> He, he won't listen to this anyway, right? So we're good. Okay. <laughs> the point is, if you get sick, or if your car breaks down, or you have to take care of your husband or your son or whatever, your ministry is in jeopardy for a while, right? Jennifer, same with you. You're, you get sick, you get laid up, your car goes pooey again. I could say pooey here, right? Yeah. That's not yeah. offensive to anyone. Okay. Just want to make sure. If your car goes pooey again, um, your ministry could be in danger of not having the coverage. Yeah. To compensate for that, I've asked you two to start working together a little more, and you, know, you can show her the ropes, and 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 so that if you need a day off, then she can cover for you. Make sense? That's not saying that you're giving up your position or anything, but eventually down the road, you might have to for health reasons or, you know, maybe just getting too tired of it. And instead of just giving up the ministry, you pass on the ministry. It's like what we talked about before when we were talking about being prepared for change. The new generation is coming into the church and they're going to start wanting to make changes and make things happen. And part of us, human nature, Say, this is, this is my church. You're taking this over and you're, you're doing all these things to it. And you're thinking that's offensive and a bad thing. Not necessarily. Because when you took over the church from the past generation, you wanted to make changes. Things were done differently when you took over because you wanted to make it your church. When you look at the, the new changes that are coming and you start to feel that this is too much, this is overwhelming, this is ridiculous, first of all, bring it to me. We'll stop it. We'll fix it. That's kind of what the, this position is about, is making sure that we're all comfortable with what's going on. But also start to think about it as the new generation is taking ownership. That means when, you're, when you move on, they're going to take over what you were doing. You got it to this point, they're going to take it to the next point. So we should be thankful for that because we're passing on our knowledge to them. This works, this doesn't. This is where the gas line is, this is where the power switches are, this is where the, you know, the water tank goes, you know, all that stuff needs to get passed on. All that knowledge needs to get passed on to the next generation or the next generation is going to be struggling because we're going to have to discover that all over again. When Leroy hasn't been here, I had to go out and try to find switches and stuff to turn things off so I didn't get electrocuted when I was fixing stuff. <laughs> it happened a couple of times. So that's, that's where okay. the hair went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the point is we need to pass on our information to the next group. Have a way out. Pass on your responsibilities. Pass on your knowledge so that the next person that comes in can take over seamlessly. And maybe they'll make some changes. Maybe they'll find some better ways to do things. Maybe they'll find uh, quicker ways, different ways than you did it, but they'll at least know where you start. Because without key people doing key things, we could be missing out. Missing out is not never a good thing. Passing on your knowledge. Jennifer, you need to pass on your knowledge of what you're learning to the next person. And you should already be starting to look for, if not already have found, a backup for you. 
work in order? Well, we've talked this, I've talked about this several times. Either way, you need to find an apprentice or a deacon to work underneath you so that you can pass on your knowledge to them so that when you're not here, we have somebody here that can take over. Barbara, you need to have a deacon under your ministry so that you can, hey, I need a, I need a week off. I'm not feeling good. Or I gotta take uh, Skippy to an appointment. Or my car isn't working like it should, so let's just take it easy and I'm gonna take a day a week off and pass it on to someone else. We should be we should be ready for that kind of change. We should be ready to pass on our knowledge to the next group to show that we don't need to restart over. We need to continue. It is hard when you've been doing it by yourself for so long, right? And I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not excluding myself from this either. I'm working on a presentation on a different laptop, so when I can't be here for whatever reason, if I'm on a, a trip again for the government, or um, my car breaks down, or my other car break, you know, but I, I, I could probably ride one of my goats in, but I might be a little late. But the point is I want to make sure whoever else comes in here, we have the music and at least the basic presentation up here so that we all know the basic steps. Because when I first came in here, I didn't have, we didn't have the TV, we didn't have the program, didn't have all the music. I got some of it, but I didn't know the order of how we do things. We kind of put that back together. And even now, even just a couple of weeks ago, we added the, the little the, the song. Yeah. And I'm always willing to do that. If there's some other parts of our, our Sunday morning service that we want to put back in, if I don't know about it, I can't do it. But we're able to continue that if I'm not here. So the next person that comes in doesn't know what to do. We just start going through the the presentation until it gets to blank screen that says sermon, you know, something like that. And again, the point would be, be prepared for when you need to be somewhere else. And let's see, we have some, yes, be prepared for your end, show God's love, those who you leave behind. Be prepared for your temporary end for the same reason, to show God's love to the next person. You know, uh, when before Jim came up to, to fill in for me, he and I sat down in the back office and I showed him everything on his computer and, and set it up. And, and I did the same for Randy, but he didn't bring his computer when he came to preach. But that's okay, I happen to be here it ran, we, we figured it out. And share your love with everyone and keep them always in your heart. Share not just your experience and, and knowledge, but share your love with them. By passing on the information that you have, that's showing your love for what you've done. By letting people know that you care about them enough to continue your work, that is also showing how much you love it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the message you've given us. Help us to be prepared for the times that you call us away from our, our duties here to um, pass on the information that we have so that the people that are picking up our duties can fill in the blanks and, and get through uh, the mission. Uh, thank you for helping us to understand that uh, what you said on the cross it wasn't just about taking care of your physical responsibilities, your family responsibilities, but passing on the, the care and love that you have for us. We know that that continues every day with every one of us, that you love and cherish each one of us, and you have 
so much in store for each one of us. We continue to to rely on you, and and we we love the fact that you're here for us. Please continue to show us that you need us and want us in your in in heaven with you. And continue to show us how much you care for us as we go through our week. Help us to share it, share that knowledge with others. In Jesus' name, Amen.